Welcome to MyTrack Training. In this video we are going to discuss work centers. Work centers are accessed through the maintenance menu, work center menu item on the ribbon bar. Work centers are groups of machines. Work centers are used extensively throughout MyTrack for routers, work orders, tracking jobs, and scheduling. An example of where work centers are used is in the work order module. We've released a work order and you want to find out where the job is. Those work orders go through steps of sequences. and These sequences are work centers. Each work center has a set of estimated hours, some actual hours if work was performed. And in this example, on the laser work center, it's complete and the administrator logged in and out for 5.283 hours. So work centers are used for tracking so you don't want to go too detailed but you don't want to go such a high level that you really don't know where the job is. So back to work centers. Work centers are set up by creating a, entering a code and entering a name. This code and name could be adjusted at any time and MyTrack sorts your work centers by that code so you'd want to sort of put this in the sequence that that operation or that work center step would usually take place. A couple of the fields involved in setting up a work center are the setup rate, hourly rate, hourly overhead. Now for job costing purposes the system uses hourly overhead. The setup rate and hourly rate are optional. Those are more for comparison what your shop sell rates are but every hour of labor the hourly overhead rate is used. Lag time is time between operations. You have a wait time that's in days if you want this operation to always be delayed. You have cap hours for scheduling and the other thing we have here is from minutes per part, setup time, transit time, staging and teardown. Those are defaults so when you add this work center to a router the system could default this. So for example this press break you may want to default that it takes 15 minutes to set up and it takes 5 minutes to tear down for each time that work center is used. Now it's optional because you could change it on the routers. The other part for scheduling is you could set the, the day of the week and how many hours that machine or work center as a whole is available. This is used to default some of the information in scheduling when you start creating your machines because again you don't want to put press break 8 foot, press break 8 foot B, press break 8 foot C as separate work centers because you want the system to schedule those as a group and also when you're building the router you don't want to determine the actual work center that that's going to be going on unless it's a very specific type of work center or a specific job that requires the tooling that only works on this one machine. You'll be able to do that but you don't want to actually set that up as a separate work center. You want to set those up as machines. This other information, monthly payment, square feet, average employee rate, those are just references and you do have a comment here. Now once you put in your work center you can now go to your machines. Here is where you list all the machines in that work center. So you could hit these buttons down below, add, edit. You could even copy a machine so you don't have to retype everything in. So when you look at a machine, you could actually put a photo in the machine if you wish, a picture of it. You give it a machine number, you can put it in a category, things like that, model year. Then you could describe your different machines. Okay then you could have notes specifically for a machine. And then lastly you will see here we actually have a um, reading and meter readings and everything where you could actually put in when it's being consumed so every six months or you go read the machine so that's for more for preventive maintenance. But if we hit the scheduling and costing tab this is 
one of the keys is where we could now override the lag time, the cap hours, different things like that. Also, you have your hourly overhead rate. You could have a different hourly overhead rate per machine versus at the work center level. The work center was the default, but you could have a different hourly overhead per work center. And then here is where you go into more detail of when that machine starts during the day to work, how many hours it works, and what days it does work. Now you have a couple other tabs here real quick. You have some fixed asset where you could enter in the fixed asset information for this machine. And you can actually, in the spare parts area, enter your spare parts. So you could track the spare parts for an individual machine. Okay, That is Work Center Maintenance. Please review some of the other videos for more information. Welcome to another MyTrack training video. Operations. Operations are used in quotes. As you see it on the screen shown, a quotation could have one or more operations. These operations are predefined in operation maintenance. When you're quoting, each operation can be set up and include setup time, a run time, includes formulas, includes costing information so all this information needs to be set up prior to you actually start quoting you could start minimal and then extend it you access the operation maintenance by going to maintenance pull down menu operations here's a list of some operations for example laser the key here is an operation is a process it's not always a machine. It could be a machine. It could be a work center. But a lot of times it's a process because one machine you could do multiple processes. For example, a drill press could be used as a straight drill or it could be used to countersink. It could be used to tap. You may have different operation rates. You may have different formulas for each one of those type of operations. So as you're setting up your operations, you could start at a high level and and then drill down to those specific operations as you determine the need to. The key on setting up your operations is you could enter a code. MyTrack will sort these operations by this code. You could renumber the code. You could change it at any time. And the name, as you see on the left hand side, your list will have the code and name and if it's enabled or not. The key fields are really describing the setup portion and the run portion. The setup is when you're setting up to have an operation being worked on and a run is the actual production side of it. So in this example you could set up your profit rates, your overhead rate, the number of employees that usually perform the operation and employee overhead. In these examples as you change the rates you will see your operation sell rate change. So in my track, we try to do things cost basis. So you have your cost, then it's marked up by your operation rate, or if you put in a market percentage. Also, be aware that your employees are set up, and you could have one or more employees. So on a stamping line, you may have actually have four employees performing the same operation. Usually in setup it's one person unless an example would be you have a forklift and you're moving equipment around for the setup, moving dies around and you require some other people to help you accomplish that task. Now for runtime it's exact same way. You have your profit rates, overhead rates, the number of employees and things. Now an operation has different formulas. By default, what is included with my track is a setup in minutes formula, and we have a formula for the runtime, minutes per part or no formula at all. You could add more formulas as you desire. Please see the operation formula setup for more information on that area. Now, an operation can be unattended. When it's unattended, there's really no employee rate or employee 
overhead rate that will get calculated into this part in this process because there's no employee there doing it now this situation it's more of a run so if you have like a night um, lights out situation where your machine is running all night nobody's there you would actually have the operation rate being performed the whole time but the employee would not be doing much now if you select unattended operation you could put a percentage in there so it's 10 percent so it, in this example it would only apply 10 percent of the employee overhead rate and employee rate to the value of this operation now once you set this up you can begin quoting now one last thing is you do have work center let me just explain the difference between department work center and operations real quick a department is an overall group of work centers a department could be a paint line it could be a punching line it could be a stamping line once you have your departments you could assign departments work centers to departments so once you do that a work center is a group of machines so if you have the same machine of a uh, punch press you have 10 of them you have five lasers they're all the same machine so jobs could be allocated to the different machines you could have one work center that groups all those together and then you have operations an operation is assigned to a work center and that's what we've done here in my setup I've created some work centers and I've assigned this operation to the work center. The reason we do that is when you're quoting, you're quoting operations, but when you're manufacturing, you are using work centers for scheduling and everything. So this is a mapping between those two when you move a quote to a router for a work order. Okay, so that's the basic idea of formulas. Once, I mean operations, once your operations are in there, you could then begin your quoting stage and actually add operations to your quote. Okay?